How you doing? It's Luke at Cloud Consultant and today we're going to be talking through how to become a cloud engineer. I've been a cloud engineer for two years myself and these are all the skills I think you have to master to become a good cloud engineer. Caveat on the good because I think to become a junior cloud engineer or just to get into the industry you don't need to know all of these and you definitely don't have to master all of these. You just have to have awareness of most of them. I'm going to show you and tell you what that is today. So let's start from the computer architecture side of things. We pan over. So the first thing you really need to know is general computer architecture. How is a computer made up? And normally this is really just your things like your RAM, your CPU, that it uses an operating system, blah, blah, blah. Nice and simple. Next, we have the three tier architecture. Now this is where you would have, say, a presentation layer, whoops, you would have a data layer and a logic layer. So the data is the back end, this is like your database, so here you'd really say that's like your DB, presentation would really be like your UI, and logic layer would be doing anything which manipulates data or changes things in between them. So now that you understand that that's how a single instance or a single server could be made up. So this is a computer, this is then a server. You need to know the basics of networking. Basically, you just need to know the fundamentals of how do computers communicate. For example, you need to know briefly about IP addresses, IP ranges for VNet subnets, things like that. But you don't have to know too much about like TCP, UDP, don't really need to go down that rabbit hole. You just really need to know about basic networking, wide area networks, local area networks, that kind of stuff. And then really you're gonna learn more about it when you get into your like fundamental certs and stuff where you actually have to learn how is networking approached within your specific cloud provider. But we'll get to that in a minute. So next up, cloud uh, cybersecurity. Same kind of thing. So really it's like you're going to have to learn just your standard stuff of like, what is a firewall? How does traffic get in here? How does it get out? Does it get blocked? That kind of stuff. But again, you can honestly learn this kind of stuff just with a fundamental set. You don't have to go looking, trawling through the internet. So next up is cloud. Now cloud, this is essentially what I've been saying is here you're wanting to really get like a fundamental cert, so I'll just write fund, that'll do. Or um, practitioner for AWS. I don't know what the GCP one is. But you really want to learn a cloud platform. And really you're wanting the fundamentals cert if you want to join as a junior. If you're a mid-level, you really need to have like the, syst oh, what's it called? The, <laughs> you really want to have like the admin associate for Azure, or you would really want to have like your um, SAA, Solutions Architect Associate for AWS, something like that. But a fundamentals or a cloud practitioner is good to just get your foot in the door to understand what are the services that are there, right? What's the services? What is the fundamentals of cloud? So what is the cloud? How does it work? Basically, how does... Da -da -da -da. We'll do this. How does this work in the cloud? Pretty much, right? And you'll get that from a fundamental certification. I do have videos going right now. You can go watch them for free where I am walking you through step by step everything you need to know to pass the AZ900, which is the Azure Fundamentals. Go watch that if you want. If you don't, you know, you do, you do. Either learning stuff from Microsoft. I'll check out AWS. I got my first set in Azure, but I also have AWS one as well. So next up, IAC. So this is infrastructure as code. You're going to be working with infrastructure as code, such as Terraform, right? I have videos on Terraform. You can go check them out if you want. But basically, Terraform is that you would write some code that would provision these things in the cloud. So for instance, if you wanted a computer, a machine, or a server, or a network, or some cybersecurity stuff, you would then write this in IEC, which would then go and provision it in the cloud, like make it in the cloud. So once you've been working with infrastructure as code, 
you'll be updating it. Now, if you're updating it, you want some version control. This is where you would learn something like git. And git is just a repo repository, essentially, for your code, where when you update it, the changes are tracked. And so that's pretty much just what it is. Now, when you're working with version control and infrastructure as code, you're now working with code. So this is where it can be handy to learn some DevOps tools, such as YAML pipelines, like using ADO, which is Azure DevOps. I do have videos on that. You can check that below, how to create your first pipeline, etc. But essentially, you're just learning, like, if I'm going to be creating stuff in the cloud, I'm going to want to version it so that I know that I'm working on the most recent version. And I'm probably going to want one which people can see, so a production one, and one which people can't see so that I can practice to make the next one better. Because, like, if an app's released, they don't, every tiny little feature that they change, they don't push it to the app store, see, right? They do it in private in the background, and then when it's done, they release it. And you use pipelines and things like that. You use DevOps tools. So you can look at DevOps a little bit. You really don't need to know much. Now, these parts here, we can kind of skip some of them. So sysadmin, you don't really need to know that much. A little bit of like maybe Linux is always good, but you don't need to know too much. So just have a little look into Linux, just create some directories, move some stuff about. Now, scripting, this is using some coding language such as PowerShell or say Python to automate things. So an example, there's something in the cloud, you want to run a command against a specific computer say, so you want to do some sysadmin stuff where you want to say, you know, show me if this specific thing is installed in the computer. And you would run, make a script, which would then automate that. So you could do it for tens, hundreds of these VMs instead of having to click in yourself, you write code to do it. So it's just an automation tool, essentially scripting. Containerization, you do kind of need to know, but not really because containerization is something which is more appropriate to engineers who are more senior. So if you're a junior engineer, you're expected to kind of know like what is Docker? It's a container engine. What is Kubernetes? It's a container orchestration. So you can follow a couple of things, uh, tutorials to do that. As a cloud engineer, you're going to have to be aware of these because you will be working with these technologies. So you'll be working with things like Docker images with Kubernetes, but you won't be actually really doing much of the, say, especially like Docker, you'll be doing a little bit of Kubernetes if you're going to be load balancing and doing all this exciting stuff, but you could learn that further down the line. Don't have to worry about it today. So next up, configuration management. Now this covers things like Terraform, right? But it also covers things like Ansible. And now these are other products you can leverage to automate more of your cloud deployment. But you don't really need to know about this as a junior. It's something that you'll kind of come across more later on. Next is DB management, so database management. Same kind of thing, so this would be like working with uh, like SSMS, which is SQL Service Management System, something like that, it's like SQL. Um, you'll get like various things because databases will be a large part of what you're using. So like every, as we had shown you earlier, if we go back over here, we can see that a three tier architecture, the back end is a database. So sometimes you have to be able to know a little bit about the database so that if you're say migrating it you can go on check it you can move the stuff you can you know do whatever it is you have to do and within the database and so you maybe have to be able to manage it but this is something you won't have to learn at the beginning you can learn that a bit later on next as working tools now this is things like if you've ever heard of it jira or say ado so ADO, my first episode of how to create your first pipeline, I cover what is ADO and how to use it. It's kind of like Jira, but with more features. Essentially, the working tools you're going to learn is things which facilitate, um, or they use Kanban boards, they facilitate Scrum methodologies, Agile methodologies, 
etc. So it's basically the fact that you'll be working from a board of tickets and how do these tickets get used, how do they link into the repo, etc. Um, additionally, it'll be things like Git, which we've covered, um, and yeah, stuff like that. So for this, you can learn it on the job. It would be good if you're coming into a job brand new to do some AD on your spare time, use Git, maybe even have a little bit of Kanban in one of your projects that you're doing, just to show that you're aware of what's actually getting used out there in the wild. Finally, soft skills. So this is just communication. Now, don't think of soft skills as, well, I'm not a people person, you know, I'm quite introverted, blah, blah, whatever it may be. Soft skills, essentially what we're meaning here is communication skills, which is the ability for you to communicate a problem and communicate a solution and or also communicate to other people about when you face problems or you want to help them with their problems. Just being a good communicator. And this... You do need to know it before you come in because part of the selection will be on how good of a communicator are you. It doesn't mean how much do you know your stuff. It doesn't mean how good are you at being extroverted. It just means your ability to communicate your thoughts and being open. So if we look at this from a bird's eye view, I'd say if you were to go away today and you're like, what do I look into? You would go left to right probably. This here, kind of, you can practice it if you want by writing reports, but it's something that you probably have within you. It's just about being your authentic self. But you need to learn this. You need to learn this. Now, this can be just very brief, very brief, very brief. Then you almost definitely need the fundamental cert. You could probably capture all of these within that cert. A little bit of Terraform with a Git repo use an ADO pipeline to show you know what you're doing there. You can maybe do a little bit of Python because that's always handy or PowerShell and bring that into here as well. So automating something. And then the rest of this stuff here, you don't really need to do that, all that, all that, all that. This is kind of just a given. This, you don't really need to know it, but it's probably handy. So just get a little bit of kind of working knowledge with directories but you don't really need it so in reality that's what I would focus on essentially just get your fundamentals set let's draw this out essentially get your fundamentals certification right this will give you most of the stuff you need to know then I would do a an ADO pipeline which I have a video on you can check that out. I also have a video on your fundamentals, so you could get your Azure fundamentals for my video if you want to. So you get your fundamentals set, you create an ADO pipeline, and then you create a Terraform configuration for infrastructure as code. Again, I have a video on that, how to do that with Azure. And with that, you'll be using it in conjunction with Git, which is what we do in the tutorial. So that would be your steps, I would say, to do it. And in total, that could maybe take you like four hours, maybe two, maybe two. So you honestly, if you have a little bit of working knowledge, you could gain enough knowledge to be confident in what you're doing in about eight hours. It is ambitious, but if you know enough of the background information, it'll be doable. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Any comments, questions, queries, let me know below and I'll get back to you. But until next time, take care and I'll see you later.